Do you want to play a game? What's your favorite scary movie? Be afraid. Be very afraid. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Here's Johnny. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Nikisha, and this is Talking Horror with Jamie. And Nikisha. Where we share our love for spooky things and talk horror through the lens of human behavior. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. (laughs) Yes. And today is a doozy. We are talking about the 2021 Netflix original American thriller film, so many words, Hypnotic. I'm so glad you decided to come in. Dr. Mead. This is the Jen. Mm, yes, I am the Jen. Ah, very nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm sort of in between jobs. I have general anxiety, so sometimes it's hard to feel motivated. I think you should see Dr. Mead. He changed my life. Have you ever tried hypnosis? I want you to concentrate on the light. Find yourself in a beautiful forest. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, Hypnotic. <laughs> it was written by Richard Dovido Video. Wow, can't say people's names. Uh, and it was directed by Matt Angel and Susan Coote. And it stars Kate Siegel, Jason Amara, and Dule Hill. And spoiler alerts for all of this because. Wow, what did we watch? I don't know, but we are going to go through as much as we can. (laughs) We're going to try to talk about it all. Uh, Is there any trigger warnings in this wonderful hypnotic film, Jamie? (laughs) Um, There there is some, I was trying to like think like murder, but like murder through (laughs) hypnosis. There is a, there's a car accident. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there is uh where you think somebody's getting crushed to death um there are some dead bodies or photos of dead bodies that we do see um mm-hmm. there's like a lot of coercion and manipulation that's happening throughout this film um and some stabby and shooty wounds just a, a little so, bit of a stab and a little bit of a just, shooty so. yeah just just a teeny bit um so if that disturbs you then skip this one that's okay and come come back yes. another time also like <laughs> pregnancy trauma yes absolutely. oh yes i forgot about that. uh hi well, i'm, the, I'm, black black I'm the producer who talks about pregnancy trauma yes <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, random male noise Brian is is here to keep us on track because I'm sure we can get off into a myriad of things with this movie because I definitely have a lot of questions to ask you about mm. hypnotizing people. Wow, oh, sure. wow. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of rage points to make, so Wait, before get really we, excited. Be, before we start, <laughs> Nikisha, have you watched anything this week outside of this spectacular hypnotic film? <laughs> what haven't I watched? We've been on a three week layoff, and mm. I've just had the time to watch so many things. I watched uh, Suspiria, the OG 1975, mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, hot take, don't get the hype, but maybe I just didn't understand it. Mm. I also watched the OG Amityville Horror. And Ooh. that was interesting to to see and experience <laughs> and witness. I mean, I liked it better than uh, Suspiria, for sure. Okay. Uh, and, I mean, for a movie that came out in the 70s about that, I mean, I've, I am devoted to all of the conjurings and, and that way of life of filming things. But I think for a movie that came out in the 70s, I dug what was happening. I was into it. I was invested in the families enough. I also, surprise, surprise, guys, I watched Freaky with Vince oh, Vaughn. Oh, oh, you did? Uh, yes. It was on my uh, list that I forgot about on HBO. And since I had the time, <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. I was like, let me sit down and watch this. Had a good old time. You know, that, yeah. talk about stabby stabs. That was oh, a lot yeah. of stab, stabby stabs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was it was great. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was kooky, over the top, but in the best way. You just 
are along for the ride, and I was here for it. So, lots, lots of of things, as well That's as a fun more. One. It, it's it's a fun one. More on the uh, psychology side because we do both things. I watched this show mm-hmm. called Made that dealt with a lot of emotional trauma and uh, domestic abuse, but emotional abuse. And so that was an interesting thing, kind of watching a woman go through all of the steps of like leaving her home and like social work and uh, all people trying to help her. And she was in like a um, domestic violence home and, you know, trying to prove things, but not necessarily, she couldn't necessarily prove things because it was emotional abuse instead of actual like physical abuse and just all of those things that can run the gamut of, of you mentally. That was really interesting mm-hmm. to watch and observe. And I'm sure I have a question that is kind of on that same page when we go through this, talking about emotional abuse, <laughs> because it's just all in the mind, mind abuse, I guess. Mm-hmm. Can we just call it mental abuse? Because <laughs> you just call it abuse. It yes, abuse by any <laughs> other name, still abuse. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that was all. Did y'all watch anything? Y'all just chilling. Um, uh, I finished. I finally finished uh, Station Eleven and cried my eyes out. It's spectacular. Everybody should watch it. I'm gonna keep saying that uh, from the hills. Um, everyone should nice. watch that. And then we we finally started Yellow Jackets. Hmm. Oh, I need to get what? What is that on Showtime? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Everybody's uh, saying great start so far. It. It's yeah. only seen the pilot, and it's like coming on strong. So I'm, I'm like already thinking, like, where's this gonna go? I want more. Um, it's, it's Fantastic. really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll have to invest in it. A lot of people have suggested that, but there's just so many streaming services. Like I can't keep up. Also, my finances can't keep up. So, you know, you got to pick <laughs> what yeah. you can do. That is true. And Very already true. having, you know, Disney Plus is so much. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. okay, great. Well, let's get into everything that is hypnotic and hopefully you won't be uh, hypnotized while listening to this. <laughs> By this plot summary. <laughs> By this plot summary, which you cannot find an actual long length plot summary mm. online anywhere. Oh, if you interesting. Try to look like on Wikipedia or IMVD, like it's just a two sentence, one sentence summary and it just leaves you to the imagination, you know, because I just want you to watch it. It's so bad. Yeah. I guess that's one strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, so who's just like this movie, it leaves it to the imagination. Oh. 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 Um, so much imagination. <laughs> uh, so I guess oh. Brian's doing it since. Oh, am I? Oh, okay. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are having a two-minute plot summary of Hypnotic by the one, the only random male voice. Jamie, I, are you going to time I'm, him? I'm I can happy bring out my to phone. time away. Okay, All Jamie's right. going to time him. So we've okay. got two minutes on the clock. Are you ready mm-hmm. to be hypnotized? No. <laughs> Okay, follow my flashing light. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, start. Okay, so we're introduced to this woman. This woman is clearly depressed, having a bad time. She's drinking in between jobs. Uh, We find out later in the movie that she has broken up with her um, fiancé. She also had a stillborn, um, which really deteriorated the relationship. Um, Her best friend tells her to see a therapist. The therapist is at her party, um, and she ends up – he's a little creepy – ends up seeing that therapist um who uh, decides to do hypnosis on her to try and alleviate her of her fears um and then during while she's under hypnosis later on um she gets a phone call the phone call triggers the hypnosis um and she um tries to kill her ex uh fiance um under the influence of the hypnosis um and then uh through research they find out that this doctor um has actually been hypnotizing women who look just like her um and we don't really know what the deal is there um a lot of people die in the course of them trying to figure all this out she meets Dulé hill who's the cop who's been investigating other murders um 
And then, uh, long story short, um, we find out that the doctor has actually been trying to implant memories of his wife into people who look like them at the wife to try and basically like recreate his wife through um, hypnosis while having that person eliminate all of the ties they have to the world through hypnosis. His father worked for MK Ultra and developing um, <coughs> developing um, this technique for the military and wild things like that. And in the end, she ends up escaping uh, because she kills him and uh, everything is okay. The end. <laughs> And that's the plot. <laughs> I mean, Great. yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this movie is not long. It's only about like an, an hour, hour and a half. Wait, what? Yeah. What yeah. did? How does it actually end? Like, what's the last shot? I don't remember. She, oh, geez. she's leaving the police station. She opened the gift that Dulé Hill got her. Oh, right, because oh, she the, she has the weird, terrible bangs with the long hair. Oh, the bangs, yeah, the, the uh, wig. All the of wig. her wigs. I was just like, what is happening with this hair? <laughs> the wigs, I can't. Kate Siegel, you, I just, I don't know. But grand. Uh, fantabulous. That was great, Brian. Initial job, thoughts from anyone? Uh, like I said, this was a, a pretty short movie, so it gets into it very quickly. You know, things are being found out uh early on and then you know the plot continues but Mm -hmm. jamie do you just want to give initial thoughts did you like it what things stood out did anything stand out how did you feel and then we'll get into Uh, the the other things your your quarrels with it i i mean i just i don't think i liked this movie um not like the content like really bothered me, but I don't know. Like I love Kate Siegel. We've seen her in so many things. And yes. like, it's interesting seeing her, uh, not like not be directed by Mike Flanagan, her husband. And so like, all I was thinking about was like, you know, are the things that are happening because the, like the story is so absurd or because like the writing and like the things that she's saying or the things that Dula Hill are saying are like so like not believable or like, I, I don't know if I was like, I, I mean, I know I was very bothered by the plot and the content, um, but I feel like Kate Siegel was like doing what she does effectively, but was just Absolutely. like surrounded by such of a mess of like, of, of dialogue and of, you know, what was happening to her that it was like really <laughs> hard to stay engaged. I would pick up on that. And, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but of course we are stands of Kate Siegel and we mm-hmm. love her work. And actually quick question, who direct, did Mike Flanagan direct Hush? Yeah. Okay, well, then, yes. So Mm -hmm. maybe (laughs) it's just a matter, because I was going to say, well, Hush is a movie that I liked in Mike Flanagan. Well, never mind. He did direct it. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So I guess this is the first thing that we are all seeing that is sans Mike Flanagan. And not knowing what to expect, I wasn't expecting it to be this powerful, in-depth, you know, great horror, whatever. I was just along for the ride. And I just was like, okay, what's going to happen? I kind of like the concept, you know, of a uh, therapist <clears throat> being kind of the enemy in this and someone that is supposed to be a beacon of trust. And they are taking advantage of, of other people for whatever crazy, wacky reasons, because that was all a little bit unclear. I'm sure we'll get into uh, his motives in all of this. But yeah, if you like Kate Siegel and you just want to watch her do the things, like it's a short watch. You just watch it and it's kind of engaging <laughs> and then listen to uh, Jamie talk about how wrong everything is when we get oh, into man. all of that. But yeah, it was just okay for me. It wasn't anything that was like super, I have to suggest this and, you know, disciple it out to the masses. It's okay. <laughs> what about you, Brian? Um, I didn't really enjoy it. I enjoyed watching it. You know, like I just was like along for the wild 
ridiculous ride. Um, I think it was well acted in general. Um, I think that the script is like wild. Uh, I had a good time watching it. And more specifically, I'm actually happy we watched it for this podcast. I think that talking about, we haven't really talked about like therapy in movies like this and stuff like that. So I'm looking Mm -hmm. forward to like breaking that down with Jamie. Um, Again, like it's weird. I, I'm. I think recently, and we talked about this a little bit with *Malignant*. Recently, I've been having a hard time with expectations in terms of going into movies. I mm-hmm. feel like we're in a, wor- a horror world where, like, I feel like once upon a time it was either campy or super serious. But there's like, there's, but then there's also these like, like this movie was not trying to be campy. This movie was trying to be super serious, um, and there wasn't a lot yeah. of camp to it. I don't know. And like malignant, we went in thinking it was going to be, you know, James Wan high art. And it was really just like a campy, like, you know, uh, wild ride. And so I I think I've been having a hard time setting expectations before going into movies. Um, I I thought this was going to be a little bit more elevated or at least better. Obviously, it wasn't. Um, But if I'd gone in like thinking this was going to be like a movie that thought it was going to be good and wasn't because I didn't look at any reviews or anything like that. I just really like Kate Siegel. Right. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I I don't think the expectations ruined it for me because I didn't have any expectations for this. But, like, if I had gone mm-hmm. in with more of, like, a, you know, a cheeky demeanor, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Um, yeah. But we'll get into also, like, this movie wasn't scary. I was never scared by this movie. But this the lack right. of trust – like in the lack and, and the vulnerability of like being in therapy and being taken advantage of 100% made me feel very uncomfortable. And I think that's part of what yeah. the movie was trying to do, but like it just made me, the movie made me very uncomfortable a lot to the point where I was like, I guess it's doing its job, but also like all it's mm-hmm. doing is make me uncomfortable. There aren't any jump scares. I don't have to figure out a mystery because they solve it for you. Like, and you figure it out before they do. So there's, there's, <laughs> I feel like a lot of times when I'm uncomfortable watching a movie, I'm distracted by humor or I'm distracted by scares or I'm distracted mm-hmm. by trying to solve everything along with them. And this one only made me uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. And I agree, Brian. I think this is just good to watch for this specific podcast. Like it fits in our, you know, niche of, of what we're doing. But as far as just a movie that was trying to take itself seriously, it, yeah, it just didn't do it for me. But again, I didn't have any expectations of like what it was going to be. So I just was there for the ride and, and there for all of the, the crazy, um, you know, light show that was happening. The The uh, light show, (laughs) the light show that was happening. We just need some like, beats in the back just some mm, 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 well then mm. the metronome comes in so oh there, there you, you go. go just add it in <laughs> just it all it all works <laughs> have you all ever been to a light but, show like at a, a like at a like at a, a, a astronomy what's it they called a planetarium, planetarium? <laughs> oh yes or be one like, of those astronomy places <laughs> the planetarium <laughs> or like the imax and yeah like yeah the, or the even just like theaters yeah, I I, I went or even once just been as a kid, outside I think. and I stared know. at the stars. Yeah, <laughs> I have seen the Northern Lights. That was cool. Oh, that ama- cool. yeah, that's on my bucket list to go see that. But that is absolutely hilarious and amazing, and <laughs> not like this movie. So nope. let's get into <laughs> just kind of like the- <laughs> Uh, let's get into the meat and bones of this because I'm yeah, I'm sure does anyone have any other general comments about this? Any mm. anything that could have been improved or it was just a lost cause? <sighs> this was just a lost cause based on content, I think. Okay. <clears throat> Got it. I don't know. I think they could have done a better job. I I it I don't know. I'm thinking about suggestions too to like see if there's anything better. I have I do have a bad <laughs> yeah. suggestion. So maybe this content is bad, but I don't know. <laughs> also, did anyone feel like the stakes were very low in terms of like she went to this horrifying traumatic experience where like it doesn't even matter how 
like long ago she had lost the baby or whatnot but like her friends just mm-hmm. seem so casual about her like come on just like see it there like let, you know cheer up like it's like i don't know that was one thing that struck me yeah. at the beginning of this movie i mean and her friend was crappy <laughs> yes and that's i mean that can lead to one of the questions that i had which was first how can you or what are the right words to say if you think that someone should be seeking out therapy because the friend did kind of seem just like well uh, nonchalant about it so (laughs) if you want to talk about how crappy of a friend she was and why you think that is but also could you tell us the right language to use if you want to suggest therapy to someone else yeah I mean, I think it's like about being compassionate and empathetic. I think like sympathy is the things that you hear when it's like, oh, there's a silver lining and like stuff like that, where it kind of is like dismissive and invalidating. And so like, if you're thinking about it from like putting yourself in that person's shoes, like if you're in a really low point, how would you want somebody to like reach out to you and offer you support? And how does that help you like be able to then frame it in a way that is like, authentic and right and compassionate and like hey you know I'm I'm really worried about you like she didn't even say that she's like, right. like at right. least I don't think so I can't remember now but it it definitely didn't seem like <clears throat> compassionate at all it was just like oh you know oh my my boyfriend forgot that you guys aren't together anymore <laughs> oops you you don't have to stay at the party or I could just give you some wine yeah oops. like it was just super weird it was in in the sense that she, this woman had a stillborn like child situation, yeah. and this is like a big deal. So to just kind of blow off being like, oh, you know, the guy that you were supposed to be with, and blah blah blah, is here, and like, oh, you'll be fine. Like, oh, do you blah, think blah, blah, you're going to get back together? Yeah, it's just like <laughs> what girl felt more gossipy. It was like weird and gossipy instead of like caring. Yeah. Right, exactly. And it's just like, come on, guys. Like you you could have you could have written that better or but mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, we need a way to figure out for her to go to this therapist. And it's just like yeah. Anyway, so the point of it though is it's coming with compassion and not like this woman did as far as just <laughs> <laughs> being like, oh, you should just go see my therapist. And oh, didn't you like already make an appointment for her anyway, like without her? Yeah, I have consent. mixed feelings about that because I think sometimes like, can you, you know, do that? people right. make a, an appointment for someone else. Um, I mean, sometimes like it, it depends, I think, on the context. But like, like for, I mean, an easier context is like parents making appointments for children but like i think adults yeah. can make appointments for other adults depending on like if their friend is okay with it but maybe like struggling with like severe anxiety around making appointments or things like that like i think that's, um, yeah that's different than just being like yeah oh i got you an appointment but then like the person actually going versus like it shouldn't be the friend doing it on behalf of the person that's like also going to the appointment and like giving all this information, like even if it's just helping someone to get there, Mm -hmm. it's still like on that person to, you know, take the leap for themselves. themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That, yes. Okay. So we've cleared that up. Brian, (laughs) now (laughs) I want you to ask uh, some of your questions about things that were correct in this or moves that were made that right. were not correct i'll let you handle handle that side <laughs> so while i was watching this is gonna be like a will you ever do this or have you ever done yeah. this <laughs> so when i was watching this with jamie she was very vocal um because like some of the things that happen in this are just even i know are just like not kosher um yeah so jamie i don't know if you have a list or you just want to like talk through like what are like the biggest therapist red flags in this, like, like, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, no, I will never go to your house, to your party. Don't invite me. That was my first I will not question. be there. <laughs> no. That was my first question. Okay. No. The therapeutic relationship is – is not a friendship. It's not a romantic relationship. Like it's, there's 
there's so many rules and like ethics and values, especially like for in social work, for example, I'm a Mm -hmm. social worker and their core, there's a code of ethics that you like have to abide by. Like it's like part of being a social worker and like they, they hit home numerous times like there's only one type of relationship you can have with them. And that is you as the therapist and them as the client. Mm -hmm. If you stop seeing that therapist, you still can't be friends. They friend, you try to friend your therapist on social media. They will not be accepting that social media request. Like it is, it is a very hard line of what that relationship dynamic is because of, you mentioned the big V word vulnerability. Like, we are inherently in this position of power and it's just not appropriate for there to be any other kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, and, and it's hard for some people to understand. I totally get that too, because like, again, on the flip side, like being vulnerable with someone, like you feel this bond and this closeness with them and it could be really confusing and you like might think that it's something else but then it's on the therapist to reinforce that boundary, right, which like right. clearly this dude showing up to this party didn't care. And then was like being really creepy about it too yeah. and like just hovering around and yeah, very, uh, very unsettling. Um, so huge red flag, like big old banner. Right. Um, no, no social interactions outside of the therapy session, which I guess like then happens again when they weirdly go to that like fancy restaurant and he's like being really weird. Mm -hmm. Um, and like telling her like, Oh, do dinner with, with your, with your former fiance. Yeah. That was what I was going to ask. Like, sorry, just to reinforce that because they apparently meet up. I mean, not meet up, but they like, see each other by happenstance you know they're just in the same place oh yeah he just time. shows up behind her yes and then Creepy. that's when they go and get the dinner or coffee whatever mm-hmm. situation but my thing is like I'm sure you're not allowed to give any type of therapy advice or session outside of a scheduled session yeah, yeah that was no wild. I'll take it yeah I'll take it even a step behind that Mm -hmm. the part where like he sees her out in public like there's there aren't like you know hard there's a lot more flexibility maybe I would say for some therapists of how they like choose to respond if they ever see a client in public but like the general thing is like you don't make the first move if your client if you're out in public and you see your client if your client acknowledges you like that's the green light for the therapist to acknowledge back but that's not okay. like time to you know like chat about, or anything yeah. like that's like it's <laughs> yes. it's like oh hey and then like you know may, maybe small talk but otherwise like disconnect like you're not like running up to your client on the street be like hey what's up? Like, how's it going? Right. Like, that's a no, no. So like, even the fact that he like approached her to then say, to like, you know, hang out was like, no, go, please, please get out. Um, right, 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 right. So yeah. So big yikes. And then, and then when he's like, yeah, how are things going with Brian? I like wanted to die. Like that, that actually like made me feel so ill because I was like, how uncomfortable that you like you know, run into this person under false pretenses because like, obviously he was stalking her at that point. Like Mm -hmm. now that we know. Right. And then, and then like start to talk about like super private, intimate, vulnerable things, like in a public space, like what a crazy person. It it was just like, so like, those are the things that even if like, if the hypnotherapy thing is what it is, which I don't think it is. Uh-huh. I like can't handle all of the other things that he's doing that are just like so wild. Yeah. Like all of like these are all just like ridiculous things. I'm never gonna like hang out with any of my clients right. at their parties or outside, take them out to dinner. Like that's just not. I'm never gonna do that. Also, so moral of the story. Oh, sorry. Go oh ahead. no, no. You tell the moral. This is, seems important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say, moral of the story is, if you're at a party and your friend is like, oh, let me introduce you to my therapist, tell them to get a new therapist because they yes. shouldn't be at the party in the first place. 
Absolutely. Good moral. Sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say, plot-wise, he, you know, when he's like, let's grab a coffee or whatever it is um, and, like, do a mm-hmm. session over a coffee or whatever. Like, obviously, they're in, like, a nice steakhouse or Italian restaurant or something like that. But that I'm was super, pre- super nice. But I'm pretty sure that that restaurant is where he gave his wife the bracelet so that when he was doing the hypnosis, like at least she could like mm. imagine like the surroundings mm. and stuff like that. that that's what I yeah. got from it. I, I don't know. I didn't even think about that. There was just so many things. And then we can, and we can get into him later because I didn't understand the motive either. Like really quickly, did he kill his they never Actual clarify that, or, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think we get that explicitly, but okay. I, I'm just assuming that he did. Okay. So he was just trying to control her and she like, because I think it, it it did say that she got a restraining order on him. Was the that wife her? did? Oh, maybe that I thought was that was client. one of his patients. I thought that was yeah. the yeah. first patient. Okay. Oh, wait. Well, yeah. Jimmy, you made a comment while we were watching about that's not how restraining orders work. Oh, yeah. That's like an aside because I worked in criminal justice where like yes. you can't get – you like at least in in the jurisdictions that I worked for, you can't just like go to the police and say like I want a restraining order. The mm. only way – the only way that you can get a restraining order, like I say very easily, but like it's not easy um, is if you, if you were in – if there's some kind of like – actual relationship, whether it's like a blood relationship or, um, like formerly intimate partners, um, you can go to family court and file a petition for another protection. Mm -hmm. But like this type of relationship where it's like, there is no relationship. Um, it could be like two acquaintances, two strangers, just two people who like are not otherwise blood or romantically linked. Um, there has to be an arrest. So like you have to go to the police you have to file a police report and then it's on the police to actually like make an arrest. And there's like a variety of reasons why they do or don't, not all of which I know. Um, but like only they can, you know, make an arrest. And then from that point, then, then like that person goes through court and like gets arraigned and that's where an order of protection comes from. So like, it's like a process. So you can't even just like go, and I, I hate when I see that in movies and stuff because then in real life, people all the time are just like, well, I'm trying to get a restraining order, but like I just went to the police and no one can help me. And like right. no one will ever say anything about why that's wrong. And it like – it bothers me so much when I see it. So it's wrong and I hate it. Yes. Do not <laughs> fall for the movie magic. You cannot get this very quickly. So yes, take the proper channels and the proper steps and – so that you won't be disappointed in the outcome if you just run up to a police officer and try to get that done. Uh, Which is, again, why I will plug the show Made because it goes through so many channels of things to where you're like, Mm -hmm. this is super depressing that... And my God, social workers are doing the work of the Lord because... (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Literally (laughs) all of the things that... They're trying to help people do, and they're trying to go through a sucky ass system to try to mm. help all of these people. It's just ridiculous. And I'm sure it was probably like over dramatized for effect, but I still believe the fact that th- it, in general, it going through the government in certain types of situations like this is just crazy when people need help now and you can't yeah. get that help now, like a restraining order. Yeah. People are, yeah. for the most part, are trying to get help now, and that's not the right. case. So, it's, it's like actually terrifying when you think about it. Cause it's like, Oh, you're saying that like, I have to wait until like the behavior actually escalates and I get yes. hurt and or killed. And like, that's when the intervention happens. Like what exactly. about the harassing? What about the phone calls? What about like, like all of the things that are the signs that like, like this is the, this is actually the intervention point because like right. it will only get worse. Exactly. And so like stuff like that is, is like, terrifying. Yeah. It's like this, people are like emotional abuse is abuse. Like we said at the beginning, abuse is abuse. And if Mm -hmm. they're doing all of those things or like taking your phone away or, or, you know, taking all your finances and stuff or taking your car away, you know, to get control or whatever, that's emotional abuse. And that needs to be handled. Otherwise it'll get to the certain point of where it's physical. Uh, Mm -hmm. so 
turning with that, I know, Jamie, you're not a specialist in uh, hypnotherapy, but that not is what this in movie. The <laughs> <laughs> but you know more than the, than uh, all <laughs> of us. So, <laughs> if you could just give us what <laughs> you can about hypnotherapy and what uh, if you have any information because uh, you were working in criminal law and they do mention in this movie that they do hypnotherapy to get people to remember certain things to use as evidence for court cases and all this stuff like that. If that's a thing. Can you just talk to us about hypnotherapy in general? Yeah. So, I mean, I think there were parts that were accurate and then parts that were obviously very not. Um, But, like, I do think that one part, my understanding of hypnotherapy is that, like, the person is in control the whole time. Like, Mm. the idea behind it is, is to enter a state of, like, suggestibility, but it's not to, like have these weird, it, it's not like hypnosis when you're watching a magic show. Right. It is, yeah. it, which like, I think that's what you're seeing in this movie this is movie like the is, guy, he's just saying random words and she's just like doing the stuff. Things. Yes. This yeah. Movie might as well he, been like, like, I wanted like chicken and then like, bonk, 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 or like something. This movie <laughs> Sorry, might as well, no, it's okay. This movie might as well have been like a Doctor Strange movie because, like, like, <laughs> like and when she goes to that second like, um, a hypnotherapist and she's like, oh, he must have put in a fail safe blocker. Like, yeah. let me put in Wait, a, like, a protection that. charm. I said that out loud and I was like, what? He put in a fail safe into her brain? What is this? What is happening? How? How? Um, but I also, I mean, again, like, you know, part of part of therapy is vulnerability but like you should never be vulnerable where like you just don't have any control over the over what's happening to yes. you yeah. um and so i think that like part of the goal like part of what hypnotherapy is is like the things that you're discussing with the therapist while in a like trance like state is is things that are previously agreed upon mm-hmm. not things that that just the therapist wants. Um, right. And again, like I'm, I'm not an expert by any means in hypnotherapy. Um, but I, I imagine that there's like a lot more like trust building and rapport building and like stuff like that. That's Mm. the other thing that, I mean, again, just another thing that annoyed me is like, and maybe, and, and again, I've never done hypnotherapy received or offered (laughs) and, and maybe this is the norm, but like, I feel like when I feel like in the beginning, like therapy is really focused on beginnings and middles and ends. And in the beginning, it's like all about building that relationship and like building a rapport. And so like for him to just be like, all right, let's like put you under and let me start, you know, tinkering around in there. In the first like, session. Yeah. In the first session. Like you don't know anything about me. Um, I feel like there's way more questions that we need to get into, but again, like, because he was doing this for nefarious reasons, um, that, that we just see him like diving right in. Um, but I think I, I, I don't know again, but like, I imagine that there's more like talk, like talking through what the process will be like, um, like psychoeducation on like, this is what hypnotherapy is. Uh, these are some of the things that you talked about. And like, these are some of the ways that hypnotherapy can help that. Like he just says like, oh, hypnotherapy will make you stop like, you know, fitting with your nails. Like let's do it. And it's just, it also like, again, not even specific about hypnotherapy, but if there's like a, a therapist that's like pushing really hard for a specific type of treatment or like intervention or approach, um, and we can talk about like, you know, if you're looking for a therapist, what that process is, mm-hmm. but you, you should like, it should be a collaborative effort. It shouldn't just be like someone else coming in and saying like, we're doing this to you. I'm going to perform this on you. Yeah. It should be something that like you are consenting to, you are agreeing to, you are, you want, it's in line with your goals. Like he's just, Absolutely. he's like fully taking control of this situation in a way that doesn't seem therapeutic at all. Um, (laughs) and, and like, and then she's at the mercy of it. I know I didn't fully explain what hypnotherapy is. And again, it's because I'm not super familiar, but I at least know that like the pieces on, you know, there has to be this relationship. Um, you know, there, there should be like, 
there should be more information gathering in the beginning. Um, because I'm sure also like with most, th- with, I think every single therapy approach, like certain things don't work with everyone. Right, so like for him right. again, to just like go right into it, like he doesn't know if it's going to, if it's going to cause harm. I mean, I, he doesn't care about causing harm, but, yeah. um, <laughs> in general, uh, the therapist should have, you know, more of an understanding of like what all the presenting issues are, any, any family history, any other history that like might be pertinent, but like, that's the point of an intake. And like, this was bare, this was like, uh, like, Oh, I, you know, I met your former fiance. Let's hypnotize you immediately. So you can poison him. Which was just such (laughs) an insane thing. And even with the very opening scene of the woman who thought that the walls were closing Mm. in on her, Mm -hmm. And and even with the friend who thought that the spider was coming up. Sorry, what were you going to say, Brian? Oh, I was just going to comment on how, like, those scenes should have been scary and they weren't. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know if it was just, mm-hmm. like, the way it was filmed or I, I don't know. But, like, like if those – if that – first, because there was no mystery. Like – I, I, like it was it was very clear from the first second that like he's the bad guy so it was about like catching yeah. the mm-hmm. bad guy and i i have less interest in like how to unless it's a well-developed thriller like i have less interest in like why the bad guy is um you know how do we catch him um yeah but sure. but if that if that opening ted you're very rude um if that opening <laughs> scene was awesome then i would have been more into it because i knew like better sequences would be coming later on but it does that does that make sense yeah yeah like start off strong and it didn't really and it was kind of lackluster and then the whole rest of the movie you're just like lackluster but that is an interesting point of movies that you already know who the bad guy is and it's just like catching the bad guy as opposed to like everyone trying to figure out what's happening which is more interactive unless Mm -hmm. like you said brian it's actually interesting up front and it's a good you know plot development And then you're like, okay, even though we already know who the bad guy is, like we can still follow along to see if they're going to catch him or not. But this, uh, yes, a lot of not great things (laughs) happening with that uh, opening scene. And even just thinking like that you had that much mind power to conjure up those things. Because I know like with anxiety and such, it's like, you know, worrying about all of the things. And so our mind is creating all these scenarios, you know, in Mm -hmm. in the simplest form of anxiety, because you're just like worrying about things all the time and scenarios and such that aren't. And then it leads you to, you know, whatever symptoms of anxiety lead you to. But with this, it was interesting seeing like people are actually like conjuring up physical things that they are seeing and feeling to where, Mm -hmm. Now their fear is enlarged, which leads me to the beautiful word that we had discussed (laughs) pre-podcast recording, and we will uh, talk a little bit about, they use the word quiescence, and they described it, the police officer officer described it as uh, the body's reaction to fear and your you know blood pressure goes or your heart rate goes up and if it continues for an extended amount of time then you die can we discuss true or false we don't have to go into detail <laughs> just tell me how you feel about the word quiescence <laughs> i mean the word i literally never heard of before <laughs> but the idea i mean i <clears throat> i i think that it can be possible but i don't think that it's possible in the way that this movie portray that mm-hmm. um maybe ever slightly of like whatever thing again you know his ability to conjure up uh hallucinations of things and make people mm-hmm. believe that they were experiencing that is wild however like if if somebody is in a state of fear and and like that and that is a very strong emotion like thinking about like fight or flight response like you know, how long can our body sustain that? And I think based on other pre-existing conditions that we might have, being put in that state, probably uh, being put in that state, like for long periods of time, isn't healthy, regardless of pre-existing conditions. Like being anxious all of the time is like not, not good for us. And, and like 
you know, and our body's like pumping out the adrenaline and, and like, it's, it's not, it needs like some place to go. So it's not, it shouldn't be like constantly, you know, at that heightened state. Yeah. But like, I imagine that if you, if there's like other, you know, like other conditions that you have that being in this state frequently would potentially, you know, lead to your death. Like, I feel like maybe that could be possible, but I could yeah. be totally speaking out of my butt. I don't know, but I don't <laughs> think that that happens in the way that this movie explains it with this word that I have never heard. For sure. But yes, I, I've never heard this word before. I, I mean, if somebody, if someone out there like has, and they know more about it and they know about it from like a therapy, mental health, psychology perspective, like mm-hmm. please, please let us know because I, I just never heard of this word. Yeah. But, um, I mean, but yeah, I, I, I feel like Maybe they had some idea of it and then they kind of like spun it for the purposes of this wonderful story. Yes. So it's not in the DSM-5. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> not not that I can recall, but uh, maybe I skipped a few pages. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So in this particular movie, we are dealing with emotional abuse. And there is a moment in the movie where she's trying to go to the police, but it's hard to pin evidence when it's all hypnosis. And so if you could just talk a little bit about, uh, is the process really hard for someone who is trying to claim emotional abuse and maybe get away from their partner or family members? Because, uh, I mean, in this, it's saying that it's hard because there's no physical or concrete evidence. So is that actually uh, true? Extended beyond hypnosis, but actual just emotional, mental abuse that you can experience from other people? Yeah. I mean, I think that there is this reality where people sometimes discount somebody's experience if it isn't physical abuse. And so without, Mm -hmm. without that, like, external evidence that something happened, it's a lot harder to, you know, be heard in the same way that you would want to. And and I think there's like a lot of reasons that make it really challenging. But I also, I think that there's a lot of things that are being done to hear people and like really believe people when they come forward and talk about these experiences, Um, more training and more Um, like there's like mental health first aid, which is offered to non mental health professionals as like a way to like learn and have more of an introduction to, you know, how, how people might experience mental illness or how, you know, intimate partner violence might be presented. Um, even if there isn't like any physical abuse going on. So I think, um, there are definitely efforts being made to, understand it. But Mm. I think there's a lot of people who still have, um, you know, some of these more, uh, archaic ways of, of thinking and might not believe people, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, but I, I also think that like, there are ways that a person, you know, acts and presents themselves Mm -hmm. going through this experience. Like it's clear that the main care, I mean, the main character is like already reeling from the experience of the stillbirth, but like yeah. then she's clearly on edge and like how she's acting as a result of, of losing time, as a result of like the trauma of, you know, her, uh, her ex-fiance being in a coma mm-hmm. and stuff like all of that is, is affecting her and the way that she's acting. And I, I, I hope that there's like enough wherewithal in folks to like be able to pick up just on how somebody's like presenting themselves and that like, it's clear that something is going on. Yeah. So here's my question. My question is obviously like, she just like took her best friend's word for it. She went to see this therapist. There was no like intake as we talked about. So I guess my question for you is like, what's the best way to go about finding a good therapist and like feeling connected to one? Like, is there a checklist or the things that like you would suggest? And and I'll, I'll do the same thing for you, Nikisha, like on the flip side of things, like what did you look for in one and, and stuff like that? So I'll kind of just leave that an open-ended question. Yeah. I, yeah. Jamie, okay. you can go ahead. I will. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think that um, like for me, I think that fit is most important. And this is like both speaking as a therapist, but also as someone who like gets therapy. Um, 
because yes, as I mentioned, there's like all these different types of like therapy approaches and modalities and the CBT and DBT and EMDR and all the acronyms. It's going to, it'll blow your brain up. But what's most yeah. important is like, do you feel connected to this person? Do you feel like this person gets you? Do you feel like you could be comfortable around this person? And like, how do you do that? You, you can have a consultation call. Most therapists will do like a free 15 to 20 minute phone call where you can ask them a bunch of questions like, you know, um, what experience do you have working with people with anxiety? What, like, what is your approach? Um, like what types of treatment options do you like to use most? Um, and, and, you know, like on the receiving end, I, I like when somebody is like, I like when someone's really feeling that out because, if they're not as concerned with that, I feel like sometimes it can be a recipe for disaster because then we're not necessarily figuring out if we'll mesh well together. And, and that's, I think that's like really worth its weight in gold in the therapy process way more than like all of the continuing ed that I've done, all the trainings I've done, like really, do you feel like you're connected to me and that like I can best support you? Um, because without that, Mm -hmm. it, it's just going to be a lot harder. Absolutely. I'll piggyback. And that's basically the same for me. When I was searching for therapists, I asked friends for recommendations and it was nice to find a therapist who was used to be in my Mm -hmm. line of work. So having someone who understood the job that I do and the magnitude that that can have on your mental health, and being able just to be relatable. And even I would go ahead and say to, it might be nice, you know, there, there is a website called therapy for black girls. So if you're trying to find like a specific, uh, you know, if you want someone who can match you culturally, you know, that can understand some of the things in that realm, if you want, you know, if you feel like you would be more vulnerable to a male or female, those are things to consider. But I think, uh, it's nice that they do give the consultations for things so you can figure out if that's the right fit. And you also, like Jamie said, you need to know kind of what you are wanting out of the sessions. Like, And of course, in the consultation, they'll ask you a couple of things, but you have every right to ask uh, about them and you know their credentials and all the things and just to make sure that you're just as comfortable uh, with them and feel like they can give you exactly what you need. So just make sure that you have a direct point of what you're trying to kind of assess or work on, uh, when you're trying to find Definitely. Yes. Fantabulous. Uh, so any last words on this wonderful Ugh, so many, movie that is so many hypnotic. red flags. I mean, we didn't even really talk about like the end and all of the, Oh, the wild scene where the detective gets stabbed by the other patient like she breaks into his house. Yes. That oh, was yeah. nuts. That was nuts. That was crazy. Like <laughs> it's just and she was already acting like weird anyway. She's being very shifty towards her. So like staring. I also was like, are people people are talk like I've never talked to anybody else in a waiting room waiting for a therapist. And like it was so weird for her to be like, he's yeah. great. He's helping me with my problems. And I was like I, I think he's craving some more. <laughs> right. Exactly. There was just a lot going on there in, mm-hmm. in general. That was, that, just was like, probably the, that was probably the scariest part of the movie when he's sitting in his apartment and like the little cabinet door <laughs> opens behind him. And she's just like yeah. crawling out of it. It's just also, like, I didn't on. realize how little she was in those first scenes to justify her like hanging out in little... <laughs> Little, um, little well, yeah, because uh, Kate Siegel was sitting down and looking up, and so like that's what the angle right. was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there were some things that I did like about this, like when they were in the restaurant and he touches her face to take the eyelash off. Um, mm. the camera kind of like panning to the other side of her, like that was like the line that they crossed or like that's when the like that's how we activated the hypnosis or whatever um and then the phone call this is how the world ends stuff is that i mean like i liked that like weird stuff like in terms of like the activation and all of that but 
But mm-hmm. like when treating it as serious, like it, it I almost if this movie had a little bit of camp to it, I think that it would have been a lot more mm-hmm. enjoyable. Um, yeah. um I thought Kate Sigel was awesome. Um I think she's, she's always good. I like watching her. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Also, we didn't talk about it. I cannot believe that the cop accepted a drink. Oh, yeah. That made me so mad. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's like this is a yes. suspect and you're going to take an open drink from this person and not think – And wild. I was literally just waiting for him to just, you know, fall asleep and then wake yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then wake up in like a random cell or underneath the house. Yeah. I don't know. Like mm-hmm. it was just so – It was it was so random. And then um, the end scene where she shot, she thought she was shooting mm-hmm. the guy, Dr. Mead, but then she mm-hmm. shot the cop. I mean, but it's like, you know, it's going there because this, yeah. not, it's not all yeah. over. Just, she's in a hypnosis of a hypnosis within <laughs> yeah. a hypnosis. Super yes. meta. Just like, just like Scream. Just super meta, like yes. a turd nothing, <laughs> you know, just within itself. <laughs> oh my yes. God. And I love how there was like, well, anytime he calls you my love, it will reverse the things of this and this and that. And I was like, whoa. But I will say, I thought it was super clever that she was able to use the memories that he's implanting on her to mm. find the house. I thought yeah. that was cool. That was wild. Yeah. Um, that was really nice. Yeah. I like the idea of them bringing in that MK Ultra, uh, like that his father was working for. And I thought that was an interesting, like historical aspect to it, even though mm-hmm. it was a little wild. Jamie, yeah. do you know any, like even just like a tiny bit more about that? Yeah. Real, right? Just like the CIA doing experiments to brainwash people essentially um and i mean i think like lsd was part of it uh but i it sounds like hypnosis was also a part i know i knew more about the lsd i didn't really realize hypnosis was part of it Mm. um until i looked it up and Mm. realized that it was so it was very uh tortury um so really painting his his mentor aka his dad in a pretty terrible light um, which isn't surprising because they were, because he was gross too. Yeah, but it. the movie was pretty gross. guessable. Uh, yeah, and the I wish, I wish it had leaned more into the white male privilege syndrome of it all, where like mm. he's this white male in power in a certain like a very specific type of power he's been getting away with these things um mm-hmm. the cop is played by a black man it's about white women and 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 i, I thought that it would be but and then and then all of their love interests are black men like i think it's very interesting that like he's really only the the only white man of power in this where everyone mm. else is either female or or minority person mm. of color um I, I that stood out to me but the script yeah. did nothing with it i think that's a very interesting avenue to explore and the movie casting hints at that so i would have been more interested in like exploring that a little bit more however i know that's not what the movie's about or not the point but it kind of yeah. brought up those questions by with hmm. the casting well yeah i mean you're just stating ways that it could have been better in it <laughs> you're like just redoing yeah, the movie yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that's totally no, fine. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, sure, the other fair. thing that I, I didn't say before, but that I was just thinking of is just like there's no way that this guy would be continuing to practice as a psych as a psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever he even is. Um, like mm-hmm. I had mentioned that there's like a code of ethics, but also like all of these professions have licensing boards. And if somebody reported that like you did something unethical or like anything remotely Mm. close to what was happening in this movie, like you would lose your ability to practice. So the fact that his patient died of suspicious circumstances, even before that, that she filed a restraining order, like all of that, I'm just like, how is this person still practicing? And then like, did he move and build this like wild office with blinky lights? Like what is going on? (laughs) But he also didn't change his name in between mm-hmm. these patients. It's not like that patient – it's not like they looked him up and he had 12 yeah. different names. He had his real name and then this one other name. Like at least like if your yeah. patient dies or something you did, like 
I feel like he should have changed his name every single time somebody died. And part of the mystery was like putting all of Mm -hmm. this together. Maybe we think that it's multiple therapists who are like in this like cult together, but it turns out it's just him. Like, yeah. like that's all. Like, and also white male privilege. Like, I, I think there's so much more you could have done with this movie. <laughs> yes, I would have loved a cult moment if this was just a cult of therapists. Mm. My God, that would be an interesting thing to follow for sure. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> wait, Nikisha, did you have any final thoughts? No, y'all said it all. This is again. I had no expectations, so I was just here for the ride. And, ride. and it's. And what a ride it was. But again, it was it was nice to watch this in the context of talking horror and that is Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Uh should we do rotten yeah. tomatoes? I'm excited. <laughs> Are you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am. I just wanna know how low it was. How lucky, yeah. <laughs> Well, well how, what do you think it was? I'm 12 is popping out <laughs> of my brain. <laughs> Super 12? low. Uh, Jamie? I doubt it's yeah, I'll low. go in teens. I'll say like 15. Uh, it has a 25. That's, mm. that's too nice. Uh, and no, and no consensus. <laughs> Did people like not see this movie? Well, like, because you had mentioned there's no plot summary online. Like, nope. Very weird. There's not. Very it's literally just yes. yeah that's weird some of these th- this first one uh from bloody disgusting she goes um the narrative plays it too safe and straightforward making for a serviceable but generic effort mm-hmm. I-, I think that's yeah yeah i'll do it that right. <laughs> um fantastic all right so should we do the four yes. s's yes yes <laughs> Skull, scare, shakes, and suggestions. The talking horns, four S's. <laughs> okay, so we have skulls, scares, shakes, and suggestions. Uh, suggestions, can't even say it. <laughs> um, all right, let's start with uh, let's start with Jamie. Skulls, skulls is mental health, human behavior. Uh, what do you give? It's so it? hard when they like take something and then they just like like ruin it and i'm like do i give them any credit yes. for like acknowledging something or do i take all the points away because right. they did it so badly um yeah so I, I i think i'm gonna give it a two because it it does like acknowledge things that exist that maybe this allows people to have more awareness of but like please dear god don't take this as facts for like 95% of what's yes. going on in this. So you only get the two from me. Maybe that's too generous. No, I thought the exact same thing. I thought two in my mind just for the fact of them having a movie about this to bring mm-hmm. up these things. But if all the information is wrong, then why <laughs> even bring it up? So I'm – well, actually, I changed it. I'm, mm. So I'm going to give it a one mm-hmm. for what I just said. I'm, I'm also going to give it a one – I don't. I, I personally, I think that this does more harm than good, and like, uh, w- like it just is not showing any of it for what it is. I, I would rather be based in realism or whatnot. If you're gonna do mm-hmm. this again, that's fine for the movie, but in terms of like rating it for this, like, I'm it's a one for me, for sure. All right, scares. Did any of this scare you? Were any moments scary? What was your scare factor on this one? One through ten. Uh, Nikisha, let's start with you. Uh, I'm just going to give it, excuse me, I'm going to give it a one only because the nail picking always bothers me. And that was just a little gross. Sure. So it wasn't scary, but it was gross enough for me Mm. to give this a one. Oh, I thought it was interesting that she was a coder and she was ruining her fingers through her anxiety mm. and depression. Look at um, that. That's deep. I thought that was, that was a little yes. piece of that. Uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, Jamie, what did you think in terms <laughs> um, of scares? <clears throat> I'm going to give it a two because the one jump scene that did make me point and yell at my TV was when the woman came out of the detective's uh, kitchen cabinet. Same. I gave it a two <laughs> for the same reason. Uh, and, uh, yeah, 
Uh, cool. Uh, shakes. How much are you going to shake this movie? Uh, is this a one and done? Is this a, you'll remember it down the line for whatever reason? Uh, Jamie, why don't this you go first? This is a one and done for me. I, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I will hypnotize this out yes. of my memory and move on <laughs> with my life. You won't even need to hypnotize it out of your. It's, it's just gone. gone. <laughs> just magically gone. Yeah, let me give it a zero. <laughs> I don't oh. need it. <laughs> don't need it. Just going all in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give it a one because because it made me uncomfortable and I just didn't like how it was just like there was that was all it was uncomfortable in terms of like your vulnerability and whatnot. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, suggestions. Who has some suggestions? Well, if you love Kate Siegel, like we all do, my favorite movie of hers is Hush. The moment I saw that movie, I was telling everybody to watch it. But if you're wanting a little bit of, uh, hallucination, hypnosis thing with the big old heap and help of thriller, watch The Perfection. That's also on Netflix. It's a good, it's a good one. A good one. <clears throat> Jamie? Um, I mean, I know that you've mentioned Get Out before, but I can't not mention Get Out, which has like a really excellent yes. scene displaying hypnosis. Um, but because we've already talked about that, um, I, this isn't necessarily horror, like pure horror. I would say it's horror adjacent. Um, I'm going to go with Memento as something that also plays with timelines and losing time and, um, like mm-hmm. amnesia, fugue states. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my suggestion. Cool. Nice. Uh, I'm going with the 1991 movie dead again. Uh, mm. I don't know if you've seen this. I saw it a long time ago. It's with Kenneth Branagh and Emma Thompson. Um, Kenneth Branagh directed it. It is about a woman who is mute and has amnesia. And uh, she arrives at like the orphanage or something like that. Um, And then they need to find out who she is. So they hire a hypnotist um, and she finds her voice again and like talks about her past only when she's hypnotized. Um, It's really good. It is... I would say it's like noir thriller uh, horror adjacent as well, but it's an actually good movie about hypnotism. And but I don't know. I, again, I haven't seen it in a while. I don't know how like I don't know how many like leaps they take. Um, but I remember it being very very good. So dead again. I think it's like I looked it up. It's on like HBO Max and Hulu and stuff mm. like that. Um, I would highly suggest that. I mean, honestly, we could probably do that and like you know our rehypnotize. Uh, ourselves um but fantastic uh yeah that's uh those are the four s's beautiful well that wraps up our episode of hypnotic you can follow us on the social meds instagram twitter and tiktok at talk horror pod talk horror pod and brian where can they listen to us you can listen to us wherever you find podcasts, including things like Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us there. Five stars, and please. Thank you. And thank you. Fantabulous. Anyone have a, a hypnotic quote? Actually, have you guys ever tried the alcoholic drink hypnotic? <laughs> no. no. I don't think I have. <laughs> it's a color, right? Is it blue? Okay. Yeah. It's blue i don't know if there's any other kind of like flavoring it's like the weird it, like it has but... like the big base and then like it goes up really skinny yeah no like yeah. a genie bottle mm-hmm. kind of moment maybe we should we should have drank hypnotic <laughs> while we were uh doing this podcast for hypnotic just make all of them themes, fantastic themed well, drinks with movies it's made it's made oh, from fruit juices vodka and cognac it is 34 proof Fancy, mm, spicy, sky blue. Um, yes. But you know what they say, Nikisha. This is how the world ends. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Cue all of the cockroaches that would come out and devour <laughs> me. 
<laughs> I hate cockroaches. Fantastic. Thanks, Thank guys, you. for listening. <laughs>